The Square Ball Podcast. And we're off with another dose of propaganda. Not too many propagandas left between now and the end of the season. Michael, Moscow, it's uh, getting around to that time of uh, time of year, isn't it? Hopefully not too many. Well, we shall see. First thing to say is that this show is brought to you in association with Levi Solicitors, who will offer you a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Michael? Well, I'm, I was going to say Will's probate and conveyancing, right. but I'm, I'm told we've got a clip, a testimonial no less. Um, not your words then, but the words of Alex. Hi guys, clearly this isn't going to be as good as Michael because he is a consummate professional, but I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Levi Solicitors, in particular Alan Ty and his team, for helping me buy my dream house. Uh, the conveyancing process was fantastic. All the guys there are amazing. How did I find out about such a fantastic firm of solicitors? Listen to the square ball. Not only did they do an amazing job, I got a 10% discount. How did I get a 10% discount? By going to www.levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Great bunch of lads. Cheers, fellas. No money change stands for that. That was legitimately sent to us. Wow. That's good, isn't it? Yep. I'm, okay, I'm learning on some, working on some other voices. So I can do other, <laughs> other testimonials. That was you, was it? Well, there you go. It's, it's a show about clips. So what a way to start. Well, there you go. With, yeah, co- with commercial messaging. Right. Um, let's get into the clips then, shall we? And what do we have this week? I'll tell you, actually, before we get into the clips, because we're recording Wednesday morning now, and a bad thing happened to Southampton last night, 5-0 against Leicester. Uh, how are we digesting that when we factor in what Leeds United did at Middlesbrough on Monday? How do you feel about it? Leicester out of sight? Yeah, probably. But yeah, I kind of expected him to go up. Southampton just irritating me now. Mm. I don't understand what they're all about. Yeah, they keep pretending they were going to get involved, didn't they, yeah. in this promotion race. Then every time they got close, they just went, actually, no, we're absolutely terrible. Yeah, that 30 game unbeaten run and then losing 5 0 to Leicester, the two things don't compute. But then I suppose we have that side of we beat in Ipswich 4 0 and 4 3, and they're probably going to finish above us. Um, so none of it really makes sense. But there's no reason for uh, Southampton to just be as stupid as they are. Didn't, didn't they lose 5 0 to Sunderland earlier in the season as well? Yeah, they're utterly ridiculous. There's, I, th- I get the feeling, I don't know, I feel like they might hate their manager. Yeah, and, I can see why, to be honest. And they kind of, they, they do well for themselves. They win because there's professional pli- pride and there's some good players there. But then he was saying that, you know, when they went 2-0 down, that after that, the defending was just pathetic. Um, I think they just couldn't be bothered after that. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> Which bodes well for the final day, doesn't it? I know people are trying to run scenarios and think, if this happens, then this might happen. But it genuinely does bode well for the final day. Because I think it would have probably been better in terms of keeping two slots open for promotion had Southampton gone there and won. But I also think to have them completely out of the race as they are is not necessarily a bad thing. And I also think having them out of the race having taken a complete and utter pasting at the hands of Leicester, also not a bad thing. Um, if Because well, they're going to be demoralised off the back of that, and it's hard to come back from a 5-0 defeat in the biggest game of the season. I don't think they care. And then there's also <laughs> the... Um, what, what, what might come into play is what we saw, the difference between the way Middlesbrough played against us and the way Southampton played against Leicester. Southampton, with much more to play for, lose 5-0. Middlesbrough, with practically nothing to play for, the goalkeeper was up in our penalty area before the 90th minute. It wasn't even stoppage time. He was up there trying to win, um, trying to get a point um, for no other reason than to take two points off us. Spiteful. Yeah, and I think we have to deal with that at QPR um, and we'll have to deal with it probably against Southampton. It, probably, it would not surprise me if um, Southampton on the final day put in like their best performance of the season just to stop us from going up. Mm. Um but then when it comes down to them keeping themselves in a chance of going up, that they care less about that. And Middlesbrough, again, plenty of time all season to get themselves into the playoffs, couldn't do it. But when it comes to trying to get a draw with us, oh, let's get the goalkeeper up and let's try and we'll force Johnny Housen to score against his will. <laughs> yes, that's, that's nearly what happened, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you see, the other factor to, well, to factor into this, I suppose, is the playoffs and the fact that they've, they've got a few injuries. Like you say, they obviously hate... Uh, the manager, they've got to save it for that, haven't they? And they know now it's a completely dead rubber. And will they be up for it if we are in a bare pit of Ellen Road? I feel like you can read too much into these, though, because I've seen so much 
discussion online about, oh, well, we need that result to go there so they still have something to play for against Ipswich because they could still be with the chance of the playoffs. So we need Huddersfield to beat Birmingham so they've still got a chance of beating it. They need a result from Ipswich on the final day, otherwise they won't try. But well, I think I think probably yeah. there's too much read into the what goes through footballers' heads. I think mainly they just turn up and yeah. try and win a game and sometimes they can't be as bothered as other mm-hmm. times. But the factors leading into that are maybe not as well thought through as they are from a fan's point of view. Because mm. we're kind of going, well, Huddersfield won't even try on the final day against Ipswich. But Huddersfield's players don't give a shit about Leeds or Huddersfield for that matter. They're just doing a job, aren't they, probably? I think what will happen in the playoffs is if we finish third and Southampton fourth... Which we'll, we can't go fourth now because they can't catch us on goal difference barring a 19-goal swing, so it, will, it would happen that way. So we'll go out in the semi-finals and Southampton will get to Wembley and lose. So the whole thing will be pointless. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you've accepted yeah, this. Yeah, you're, you're normally the, the positive one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. But I'm I'm actually, I think I've reached a state of almost calm now in much the same way as I did last year when I realised we were going to go down. It was awful for most of the season. And then I realised we were going to go down. I was like, actually, do you know what? I'm fine. Mm. I'm all right. And I think now, because the parameters are narrowing, the, the, the things that we have to do, the games that are available, if we just go out and win on Friday, that'd be good. And then if we win our final game, it means that if Ipswich drop any points in their remaining games, we go up. So it's that simple. We win both of ours, and if they drop any points, then it's us that goes up. Yeah. And if they don't drop any points, fair enough. Yeah, if they win three from here. And well done. With three games in a week. I mean, yeah. And if we don't go up, we'll just win 46 games next season and romp to the title with 200 goals. Mm, I've been bargaining with myself about this, thinking, well... Maybe we do, because next year we'll probably go up on like 87 points or something because it'll just be a normal season. Yeah. And Sheffield United will come down not being great. So will Burnley, so will Luton. It'll just be an, an easier division next year. We might have a lovely time. And we'll do it maybe without Somerville, maybe without Nonto. But there'll be some other players, won't yeah, there? Yeah, get that uh, Lassie Lath off Middlesbrough. Hmm? Just buy, buy any player who looks quite good against us and we'll, um, we'll go up that way. It, the one bit of, uh, sort of... Is that the Billy uh, Painter clause, that one? Um, well, we should have signed Charlie Austin, <laughs> as we all know. Um, that sliding doors moment, but Charlie Austin was going to cost money, so Ken didn't uh, like that. But the, um, uh, what was I going to Latte say? Latte Latte mentioned about him. I did mention him. Yeah, we pensioned him off. Sign the best players in the championship. Some other stuff. Nah, it's all gone. I don't know. <laughs> sign the best players in the championship, if we, can have, if we can afford it. Got a lot to pay out, I think, haven't we? But let's worry about that for another day. Let's let's do. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Kick the can further down the road, Moscow. So the one thing that would be nice about going up this season is so that Cooper, Ailing, and Dallas can have their like mm-hmm. celebration that they missed out on um, in 2020. But if we go up next year, then still come back. We're always yeah. welcome. It's a public event, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that then. Just yeah, go up. Next... Just go. We'll just go up. Full, full stop. Whatever. Yeah, at some point. But it's. I suppose my logic is. Um, well, it's not really logic. It's just kind of trying to come to terms with what um, ever might happen. But you, we know that when the when we're in the Premier League, our sort of horizons become back to like, can we get into mid-table and all the kind of... Ten wins. Comes with it. So there is that <laughs> thing of, um, yeah, 10 wins is not a lot to go for when you compare it to how many we've got this season, 27, uh, maybe 28 now. And um, the, the idea of taking the fun where you can if, next season could just have the best team in the championship, just win every game, and it'll be a total laugh. Um, so why not do that and just delay things? You don't want to go another season because that's when you reduce parachute payments, all the profit and loss, loss stuff starts to bite and more good players leave. But we can have a we even with players leaving, we could have a good enough se- uh, team next season to absolutely storm the division, finish above Everton. I don't know if they're coming down, <laughs> whoever. Um, and have a really good time and then go into the Premier League and be miserable. Well, yeah. Forest are going to be coming down anyway because of the um, conspiracy against them by yes. the referees, by the Luton yep. VARs. And, and if they don't come down because of the referee conspiracy, if that's proven to not be the case, they could come down because they'll reduce, uh, they'll do another points deduction on them for questioning the integrity of the game. So they'll find a way one way or another, won't they? I kind of do, to be honest. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> Absolutely, all in favour of Nottingham Forest being relegated because of a tweet, <laughs> just because it's twenty twenty four and it's about time. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. I did listen to some Forest fans to try and get something for propaganda, but it was just sort of low level moaning about stuff. Mm. Did they did they like the tweet? 
Um, no, they actually didn't for the most part. Maybe agree. The, the ones I listened to were saying they agreed with it in terms of they've been done over by some decisions, but also just don't do it. It looks yeah. makes you look stupid. We had that when Radrid Sandy was tweeting in the second half of us mm. losing to Wolves and there's lots of stuff where it's like, yeah, it's a good point, but shut up. Yeah, no, it's, it's not a point you should be making. Let, yeah. let, other, let other people make that well, point. Did you see that they nearly went full GFH, didn't they? And they, were, uh, they had to be talked down, did the, the owners at Forest, from putting something out at half-time um, <laughs> by the club's media people and saying, this is this is a bad idea, mate. Don't do that. So they saved it till afterwards instead when they implied that the referees were cheating them. Mm. So there's that. There is that. Right, let's get to the clips for this week's propaganda then, shall we? And uh, where are we going first? Where are you taking us on this magical tour, Michael? Well, Middlesbrough. All oh, right. Oh. So it's not that, not that magical. So just outside the Yorkshire boundaries. Exactly. Well, yeah. So we'll start with um, a prediction from a voice you might recognise. I'm going to say 2-1 to the bother for today. Obviously, it's Leeds, so it's the game they want to win the most um, all season. Come on, Verbora. Come on, Verbora. Do you know who that is? I do know who that is. Do you know who that, that is? Do you know who that is, Moscow? Yeah, he's got very uh, distinctive sound. It's not Bob Mortimer. No. Nope. Well, Athletic Omens or anything. It's Mike. It's Mike Loudon. Right. Or oh, Lofton. I don't know how you pronounce it exactly. Loudon, I'd go for. L- 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 Lofton. But he is, of course, the Bamford man. Borofan TV, Yusuf here. Uh, with, with Mike. Mike, what do you think of that game? Patrick Bamford. Oh, he's on fire, mate. Um, but I, be honest, I don't sound excited. Be honest, um, that game, I think we were really lucky to win. Be honest, um, it was quite poor, really. I've never heard the 12 inch of that. That's what I thought. I thought I'd put a little bit extra on. You, yeah. just, you only ever hear the, 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 that, the clip itself, don't that's you? That's the album version. Exactly. Wow. That's for the purists. <laughs> the on vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, should, we should get on vinyl if we go up. What, Patrick Bamford's song? It's just just that. I mean, obviously, maybe have to loop it on the vinyl. I don't it's think a lot of, it's a lot of resetting. You can't get any vinyl made because Taylor Swift's just done a new album and she's got 15 different vinyl versions of it out. So... All the vinyl presses across the world have basically ground to a halt. It's all right. Yeah, apparently so. Selfish. Yep. Have uh, we ever been that excited about Pat Bamford? I feel like we've maybe missed out on some of the fun because most of the time it's been even when he's scoring, well, he bloody should. <laughs> um, but that sort of pure joy in him uh, scoring, mm. I assume he scored and he didn't just... He and just signed. Just played well. Did he some was, good running around. Yeah. Yeah, They beat, it was after they'd beaten Birmingham 1-0. Right. It was that, so... Happier, happier times. For yeah, very much so. Does he still love Pat Bamford as much? Well, because he's do, he's still doing little. He's not. That was from Borough TV. Was the original clip, which seems to not be particularly active anymore. But he's now got his own YouTube channel, though. Right. Yeah. And he was at the game, so it was great to hear him. So and then, very much the Robbie Williams of Borough TV. Yeah. Though, well, the, yeah, as we'll find out in a minute, there are other splitters from Borough TV as well. Oh wow. Um, but then he manages to bring it full because obviously he's. he's it's his main work, isn't it? That it's like it, it's it's what I'll always be known for. Whether or not whatever he does now, he's still going to be the that 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 yeah. Patrick Bamford man. Um, but he's then in the stadium when Leeds fans are singing it, and he's talking about it. Very meta. You hear this in the background? The storm I was song. Oh wow! Circle of life, isn't it? They stole our song. His. It's not. It's not our song. It's your song, mate. Yeah. You own that, as far as I'm concerned. Wow. What are you bringing Watford into this for? Your song, I see what you did. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I, th- I had the same thought, but I didn't make the joke because I thought he was shit. But mm. yeah, it's fair never stop me. <laughs> <laughs> go on then. Uh, we'll go back to Inrictus, who you might remember in the, in the very excitable. That sounds like a Victorian disease, does Inrictus, doesn't it? What are uh, what are you down at the? the mm. It's not a clinic. They don't have clinics in Victorian times, do they? The infirmary. The infirmary. Yeah. What are you the infirmary? Oh, I've got Inrictus. Oh, that sounds bad. Are they going to have to chop it off? Probably. It's a little bit like, is it, cause is, is it the Rick? Is it the Ricketts? Ricketts. The is it the Ricketts yeah. hiding in the middle? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, uh, this is the Aussie Borough fan. Yeah, then. so he's he's also, um, this is the Bamford goal from his point of view, and he's uh, he's not happy with Pat. Now leads into the box already. Bamford scores. How has this happened? What has just happened? What has just happened? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, he, he, he didn't. He, he, hip, he hit his hip. Is it Bamford? Is it hit his hip? It's hit his hip. It's hit his hip and bounced into the back of the net. 
And he's even celebrating in front of the Barra fans like he doesn't remember what he did for us. How's this happened, he asks. Because you're defensively shit. That's how it happened. Because he's on fire, mate. He is indeed. Haven't you heard your, your pal? Mm. Yeah. It was, um, I th- he was just a bit confused by the pattern of the game, I think. Right. What, as in what's going on here because it well, was we all uh, yeah, join the club <laughs> it was very it, both games against Borough this year have been like that haven't they where you've just been like why Why is there so many goals can I, everyone I, just calm down I was going to say I would, I would urge people to read Moscow's match report on the website which uh, I think paints the picture of a bewildered man mm, I'd even forgotten about the Borough at home game I say it was the first time we'd been three to up because Farkas all like oh we need to just keep doing all the good things that we've been doing and not change I'm not going to change the plan and suddenly we've started conceding those goals and scoring those goals which it's not really been the pattern of our good times. And yeah, we were three to up against Ipswich in the fourth game and I'd forgotten that we did it um, again against Middlesbrough. So we have had our little moments. Farker throws in just to keep it interesting and then like letting the other team have the ball for half an hour. Let's keep it, you know. There were there were Moscow accusations of it being a bit boring, weren't there? The style, so what's he gone and done? He's gone and turned it into a madness. Yeah. yeah, the Borough home the game. First half. The Borough home game. We were two one up after seven minutes. Yeah, I mean that's exciting, isn't it? I, I, I've completely forgotten this as well. But that um, Dyke steel got sent off in that game as well. So he's been really good for us this year. Given us a penalty, got a red card. Was just generally awful as well in that game. Mm. He wasn't quite Huddersfield right back standards of awful, but he was pretty terrible. I mean that penalty was just. Like, it's thick, wasn't it's it? Just, why did you do it? It's weird. You kind of imagine he'd be a good defender too, just because in your head you go Van Dyke, yeah, and then mm. Steele is also a good quality. Dick Van Dyke, Dick Van Dyke, which is where the name Dick Van Shipwich came from. It was a popular character on the member show. Mm. If I remember from the Sky commentary on that penalty, they never actually said it was a penalty, did they? I felt like it just was. It just went from um, the tackle. And then there was just silence. And then they were just like, <laughs> well, Bamford's giving the ball to Somerville as if it didn't even need, you know, sometimes uh, pictures tell their own story. Um, and I think there was also an element that the referee hadn't quite made it clear what he was given. He was kind of wandering around, pointing at things. So rather than um, do what some commentators do, where they're like, it's penalty. No, it's a free kick. Oh, no, he's given a goal kick. He's at a corner. I don't know. It's got, it just went, let's just wait and see what happens. Ball's on the spot. Must be a penalty. But also I think there was an element that it was just so... Um, yeah, that it was just a dumb thing for that guy to do. So good on him. Maybe Andy Hinchcliffe, the ever popular Andy Hinchcliffe, we should say, just couldn't bring himself to say the words. He was so disgusted with what had happened. Am I, uh, I need to check, I should know more things about football before <laughs> Why? trying to Why start now? <laughs> say these things. So Dyke Steele was playing right back. Correct. So instead, he of, was, instead of Luke Ayling. He was in because Ayling wasn't. Correct. Amazing. Yeah. Ailing helped us to that. Yeah, country. even when he's not playing, Ailing is still their best player for Leeds. Right, should we go back to the clips then? And we're still within Rictus. Yep, and this is um, Nonto's goal. It was, it was a, a fraction, a hair's breadth offside. <clears throat> right, Greg moves the ball up to Somerville. Somerville gets it back behind him. He then put his offside. He's Nonto's offside. He's offside. <laughs> He's offside by a mile! God, that's a killer I hate. I know we hate VAR, but I tell you what, I hate that even more when it's not a goal. It's not a goal. Patrick Bamford's blocked the vision, apparently. And the linesman hasn't seen it. It's goal given. 3-2 leads. Fuck. I saw the goal that Leicester scored that I think was fractionally offside last night. That was very disappointing to see. I think the official should have got that one right. It would have kept it to four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch it. Which goal was it? One of them. Oh, one of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a, not a key one then, necessarily. Just one of the goals. <laughs> no. I can't remember. There were so many. There were so many. I think it might have been the second one, but, you know, whatever. He was quite... I quite appreciate the way that... Um, in Richter's went through the whole game knocking a goal off because I feel like we've done that before as well just going <laughs> that, it's not I don't count <laughs> it's still 3-2 as far as I'm concerned because that goal shouldn't shouldn't really be included it would add as well to throw it into the whole VAR debate that reaction on the replay is exactly what nobody did when they saw the replays of Coventry's goal mm. nobody had that reaction nobody cared until somebody starts getting out oh, oh no I can make this offside if I measure it hard enough 
And that's where, that's the whole failing of VAR is giving things that nobody gives a shit about. Mm. Mm. I think do it on a panel. Have like a hundred people with who wants to be millionaire style. Yeah. You get to see it once and you go, is this offside? And if people go, nah, just don't give it. Do you know what? It's genuinely a good idea. It is a good idea. That wisdom of crowds. I know. Yeah, wisdom of crowds. You're right. It, it's quite. I think it's quite labour intensive. I think the 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 labour bill might it's be not, quite there's, high. There's easily a hundred people watching games. Well, like volunteers just do it. Yeah. Text yeah. in. Is that offside? <laughs> and then you've got Nottingham Forest chairman demanding to know the birth certificates and the the club allegiances of every 100 people. Mm. And if there's not equal fair representation, it's got to be. Um, I suppose it would have to be 92. So there's one person from every club but even then um you know what if somebody's been bought off evidence of corruption somebody's not sure so they're just copying the person next to them all this are the one uh the one video footage of everybody pressing the button on or so until we close nottingham forest down um, <laughs> these things are not going to be possible that's a point actually here's a, here's a man who has been accused of match fixing in the past isn't he forest stone yeah, and he also, I was saying, on one of the, was it one of the shows I did, I say just privately, that he uh, off air that he had specifically picked out Mark Clattenburg mm. when, because he had some sort of overseeing of the Greek referees, did Clattenburg. So when, as he's the, is Olympiakos he's the owner of as well? And uh, yeah. he, he cited specifically Mark Clattenburg as being a problem and then hired him. Um, so I don't know what that's about, but I was going to say actually. Clattenburg's so skinny, isn't he? He's either so skinned or he's just desperate for money for something. Huge, huge narcissist because he's, he's, he's the ref on Gladiators now, isn't he? That's come back in he's the UK. He's just taking anything. Um, but I was going to say, actually, if you had a public text in, you'd start then getting some sort of text farm, click farm style operations that football clubs would be employing people, then would deny all knowledge of it. You well, know, you need... Another 115 charges up by, you know, by the Premier League. You'd need some vetting of it, don't get me wrong. All right. But like if 100 people, just because just it's... Football's more of a vibe than people like to let on. Right. So I think it'd be better if people went, yes, it is Anne, but come on. Yeah. F- fuck off. Right. I think that'd be a better, and like, and the penalty where you can go, oh, there's some contact, but still, it's not a penalty, is it? Those ones that refs will give and VAR will take a look at and go, well, actually there is, he does kind of touch his ankle and yeah, I know he takes another three steps and then goes down, but. Public, we'll get, public vote VAR. Bring it in. Not public, but a panel of vaguely sane people. Mm. And if there's, and if it's enough, if it's vaguely sane, you can uh, kind of accommodate a few outliers, like a jury, that. like a jury sort of, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Do you know, I think we might have just fixed football forever. I'll just get rid of it. All right. Okay. I mean, that's the real simple solution: get rid of it. Right. And then allow Willie Nonto's goal to stand. Allow Coventry's goal to stand. Um, don't allow Leicester's because that should have been given offside. Correct, and go, but do give and just well, and just give the handball that Sunderland did. Just see that handball. Yeah, and don't allow Bamford's in the second half. Fine, we got Nonto's second half one, mm. not a problem. What well, um, I noticed as well about the the Nonto goal was that I think the Borough fans thought that we were offside in the build up to mm. Bamford's goal, and so then when that linesman did give a, give an offside, there was huge ironic cheers going on and then the next chance he had to give a player offside oh no pat bamford's in my way what can i do oh i know you cheered at me when i I raised my flag before but just can't can't quite manage to lift my flag this time not quite sure up yours and i quite like that i think um referees uh if they want to just give it back to fans that way it's like you take the piss out of me i am not going to give you this offside that's fine that's fair i think there is a certain low key um, aspect of that with the way that some refs referee games whichever dickhead it was in, in a recent game was it the Blackburn game who just, he, he seemed determined to not be swayed by the crowd mm. but yeah in doing so you go the other way don't you sometimes but all that's part of I mean has always been part of the game is you know if the referee is a Luton fan you turn up and you say right referee's a Luton fan he's not going to give us anything today so don't you know take that into account no stupid tackles don't get wind him up and you then have to adapt to it. It's the same as like, it's raining, so don't pass the ball into a puddle or it's windy. <laughs> Keep the ball on the floor. The referee's a fucking raging dickhead. Don't, you know, deal with it. Mm-hmm. It's always been part of the tactic. If it, and you saw it on there. It's what was kind of frustrating about the um, uh, Nyonto in the build ups of Borough's first goal is whether that was a foul or not when he got pushed over, you'd kind of seen that the referee already was trying to let things go and wasn't giving those kind of things so lying on the floor flailing going like that's a free kick 
come on, you've seen enough in the game already to know that that's not going to work. So you've got to try and take those things into account. And, um, and it's part of being good or bad at the game. And um, I think we learnt it as the game went on. It's like, right, we're not going to get this stuff from the referee, so stop trying to um, to go for it. And you lose a lot of that stuff when you just go on to um, analysing video footage and asking players to do things um, in freeze frames that would be physically impossible for them to achieve in actual real time. There's no way for the Coventry players to look across the line and make a decision based on that absolute pinpoint moment that somebody is going to put under a microscope and measure it's just like am i in line with their defenders pretty much right through ball bang and that's football whereas um uh, this business of trying to work it out under a microscope is just not um possible right let's head back up the a1 take the dish for turning onto the a19 and pop back to Teesside, shall we? Good directions. Um, You're welcome. I used to drive it every day, so. Very good. We're going to AJ, which is another voice we will recognise. Here he is um, from a game when Thomas Christensen was our manager and we had beaten them, Gary Monk's Middlesbrough 2-1. Can I just ask, under uh, Thomas Christensen, how did we play? Well. (laughs) Thank you. Here we go. You play a Leeds and you think to yourself, you know what, I want to beat these. It's just for pride anyway because everyone hates Leeds. And and I'm not even saying that to be respectful. I hate Leeds, truthfully. And I can't wait till he comes to Riverside, honestly. Because the guy threw the coin at my belly. I hope I see your truth. I hope you come and chuck a coin back at my belly when I'm stood in front of you. Because I hate this club. I hate this stadium. This here, right, is like my freaking granddad's shed, mate. Old and rotten and dead. Just like your fans, truthfully. Your club is going nowhere. Come out your history. Stop banging on about your history. And, you know, you're a famous club. And stop singing around me and putting me off this interview. Disrespectful. You're awful. So is your mum. Do you know what I mean? This is this here, right? This here is not a special stadium. This is you go to Ayrson Park. This Ayrson Park, literally craps all over this, mate. Truthfully, doesn't it? You got these forty thousand fans and all these things marching on together. Whether it's marching like Aldi for your friggin' ninety-nine pay bargains. You're not a big club no more. You're not a big club. Listen, you know, your, your friggin' sound system in your stadium. You're trying to announce, announce things, and it's going all cuckoo, man. It's giving me friggin' headache. Listen, your songs give me an edit, your fans are ugly, your stadium's minging, and listen, you're not going up, so yeah, well done for beating us today. A round of applause for your three points. But I'll tell you now, you're not going to be better than Borough, ever. Your history's not better than Borough, so forget about this 2002 semi-final in the Champions League. Yeah, you're frigging here to come back and look like frigging Sunderland, so you know what I mean? Up to you, is that the League One, or just admit that you're rubbish? Come on, your history. Simple. I mean, it's hard to come back from such a smackdown, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's legendary stuff from <laughs> AJ. Uh, happy to hear all that again. <laughs> The, the sound you may have heard if you're on the on the audio version was me grabbing a copy of my history book and throwing it on the floor under AJ. It's worthless, isn't it? He's just told us. All yeah. of it. Put it Although, in the bin. to be fair, I did write it after he said that, so that's what I think of you, AJ. Uh, I think watch, weep. watching that back, you're kind of laughing along at it and going, all right, here's, I'm going to go to the stadium fight. The bit where you really flinch is when he accuses our fans of being ugly and he's there on the screen and you go, well, hang on a minute, mate. Come I mean, that, that is a cheap shot, but possibly a fair one. Class houses and all that. Come on. Sound system was my highlight. Yeah, it's giving me giving me a freaking headache. <laughs> How is he anyway? Is he well? Um, that was a long time ago. He seems to have mellowed. It seems it was the uh, was the gist of it anyway. So here he is uh, at four two down, and he's actually sort of taking it disappointingly well. Just before I press play on this, can I just check? Was he suggesting that Ayrson Park now is better than Ellen Road because it's a housing estate now, isn't it? It's still better. I, I think, think under any circumstances, well, like before it was built, while it was a shithole, and then since it's been knocked down, better. Great. Leeds have been very, very well drilled going forward. The very clinical looks dangerous, and uh, ultimately, we haven't been able to match them. Can you translate that back into Yorkshire for me? You said the Leeds have been clinical. We've not been able to match them. That was, he, that was a four two in fairness. When he got back to four three, he got a bit excited. Yeah. Do you think he's grown? And is that the uh, is that the message here that he's he's evolved as a character? He's you know he's experienced some maturity. Uh, maybe he's just in more comfortable surroundings up there. So because he was down at Ellen Road, only with people singing at him, someone threw a coin at his belly, and I hope maybe that person six years on went, "Hey, I'm the I'm the guy who threw a coin at your belly." You said, "I know it's late, but you did say you wanted me to come and throw a coin at your belly again." Mm. Um, so I'm I suppose I'm here to do it. And now they're married. Come <laughs> <laughs> do it from how, how close do you want me to stand? I mean, different times. Maybe do the maybe he's contactless now. <laughs> right? Yeah. Just, yeah, no, one has, no one has changed anymore, do they? Just wave it, yeah. Fine, right, um, from AJ2. Do you want to stick in Middlesbrough or do you want to go elsewhere? Well, let's get let's get the bloodletting done. 
get out of there as fast as we can. Chemicals in the air and all that. All right, okay. Um, NMP Football, he was in the stadium. An anti-Sky Sports song, which I've not heard. The lyrics to this, because you may hear the start of this song and think, oh, this is a problematic one. Hmm. It's a different ending. Okay. Thank God. But it's uh, but it incorporates anti-Sky Sports and a bit of We All It Leads Come. We could pull out some else. I'm not really worried if we lose anyway, you know, our, our season's over. But it's just pretty much just a free pop up lead, really. Oh, wow. Anti Sky Sports. Who would have thought? Mm. I, thought I, I thought it was a new spin on it, but yeah. it's, it doesn't come across as well on telly. I think is the thing. You can always really clearly hear our Sky Sports song, can't you? Mm-hmm. Although we are going to say they're a great bunch of lads as well when, if the sponsorship thing does happen. Yeah, because we got sent the email, so we got to sign off potential clients, mm. and it's a fair wedge of money. So, I mean, are we, are we, are we selling out if we, if we carry that advertising? I mean, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Might as well get something off of it. Yeah. <laughs> Quite like the, uh, the admission that it was a free pop at Leeds at the end of that. Mm. Yeah. Might as well enjoy it. It didn't work, but fine. Um, this guy was also then just moaning about the ref a bit, just to finish off. Do you know what, right? That was a good game. But him, him, he's ruined this game. Leeds deserve the win, but th- this lad here, the man in black has ruined that game completely. It was a really good game. And it was close. But that ref, that ref ruined that game. We were saying before, weren't we? They've never won a game with him refing them. And he's from Teesside, but I think Gather is a Hartlepool fan, so he's going to have a natural disposition against them, I suppose. Johnny Cash, wasn't it? The man in black. Mm. What were his complaints beyond the non L goal? <sighs> he, he just didn't seem happy generally. I think they were, because he was in the ground, complaining about some offsides that weren't. Because they, they did seem quite shit at playing the offside trap, I have mm. to say. Because I don't think we're brilliant at breaking it. Um like he were, he went mad about Dan James actually going down in injury time when it turned out Dan James had actually injured himself quite, quite seriously. Basically lost the lung. I must admit, when I saw him rolling around, I thought, "Oh, well done, Dan James." Yeah, I thought he was playing it quite cleverly. You stay down here. Yeah. <laughs> but then, and then you saw you see the pictures afterwards of him on like gas and air on the bus or whatever. Mm. So yeah, it, but he was annoyed about that. And just did you did you try the gas and air by the way when uh, your wife was in labour? Did you go that well? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No. I gave the epidural a go, but no, no I, the, I have had it, I've had it for. Um, <laughs> We're getting into this again. I'm sure this is, is based it, is, on the. Are you talking about your show. rectal camera? Yeah, the old. Oh, uh, right. I had a colonoscopy once, and that yeah. was. Uh, I had an option of the gas and air on that. Did you give that a little toot? I had a bit of a go on it. Yeah, but mainly just because it was there. It was. It was all right, really. Did you kind of breathe in at the crucial moment? <laughs> so uh, yeah, gas and air as the, as the eagle was landing. <laughs> <laughs> get, get involved <laughs> in all these things. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? Got to give stuff a try, haven't you? Exactly. Got to give stuff a try. Right, uh, should we go from there to Huddersfield, is it next? Where do you want to go? I mean, we've got Huddersfield, we've got Sheffield United. What's the difference? They're all so, so happy. Um, let's go on Harry Kilner then first, who's, uh, who's at Huddersfield. He's the guy, I think he's a, he is actually a Huddersfield fan, although he was at Sheffield Wednesday when we played them as well, when that terrifying bloke went, I fucking hate Leeds, we're all Wednesday, aren't we? And he went, yeah, yeah, mate, we are. Yes, I am, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, um, they lost 4-0, didn't they? Which was, they did, yeah. Which was a shame. But this is going into half-time at 0-0. Nil, nil. Half-time, 0 nil. One of the worst halves of football I've ever seen. I'm so strapped for both teams. And I feel like town might be a bit of a product. You know we get better here in the second half. That's, that was the sound of a PA system. Mm. Mm. It can only get better in the second half, was what he said. Right. Dear listener, it did not get better. Was he predicting that Birmingham would have to take Tyler Roberts off at some point <laughs> to give them a chance? But uh, it didn't get better. And they didn't score till around 70 minutes, though. So, right. So that was good. They, they, held, they um, held them off. Just looking down their results since they won 1 1 against us. Mm. Did they uh, won once since? They London? lost, lost, drew. I know it's I know it's old. Um, they beat Millwall, which was nice for them. That fellow with the big face um, on Twitter Ka- is... Carmichael. He seems to have pivoted entirely to talking about basketball now as well. Oh, that's interesting. The old, old moon features. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lost, draw, lost, yeah. One I've one. realised, sorry. They play Birmingham next, don't they? Yeah, yeah. The, the reference to Tyler Roberts is completely irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with anything. Nothing. It's because it says 
Uh, the fact yeah. we didn't notice Moscow. No, yeah. I, I, I did. I was, I was going to mention it. They could save themselves with a game against Birmingham. I read that as if that was the game that these clips were from. No, it was and I was just looking to see just how good Tyler Roberts had been um, against them and realised that they played Swansea. So however good old Tyro was against Rotherham in their nil-nil draw um, <laughs> is not has no bearing on this game. Um, it was the power of Matt Grimes was too much for them in this one. Got a 6.7 on sofa score. Do you know, here's a quiz for you. Do you know how many shots on target Huddersfield had in this game? Was it none? It was none. Oh, wow. That's, that's good, isn't it? Um, oh, actually, I just I, one thing I forgot to cross sell. You know, we were just talking about Uranus before. Oh, yeah. Uranus features on the member show this week. He does. There's some, uh, some graphic photographs. <laughs> <of his version. laughs> the video version will be quite the eye opener. <laughs> um, old, yeah, there you go. The old uh, tea towel holder. Um, Right, we're back to the Kilner bank, are we then? Harry Kilner. Yes, we're back to Harry Kilner. So uh, this is the 70th minute. This isn't a bloke who's meant to be on his video, but it's just sometimes you capture a little bit of, of audio and this is um, a bloke returning from his 70-minute piss at just the right time. Have a missed out. <laughs> yep. Have I missed out? Oh, no, perfect. Well, not, not yet. Not yet. That is, uh, it's like a... A sketch from a sitcom or something, isn't it? That I like that. And the third goal is going in. They they can manage to concede two in injury time. Well, one on the stroke of of injury time, as you'll hear now, and one injury time. But this is um, them them trying to announce it just as the ball is going in the net, and you can sense that pause of it. Is it? Oh fuck. <laughs> In fact, it's at least nine more minutes. Oh, no. With mod modular... Oh, fucking nine more minutes anyway. Yeah. On your fucking go. They clip that properly. It sounds like a great endorsement for their company, doesn't it? <laughs> I think the first time I encountered that was, was at Burnley away, a sp sponsored substitute announcements and sponsored mm -hmm. time checks. Wild, isn't it, that? We don't have, it. We don't have that at least. No, we don't. I mean, it, it, it feels a little bit... Yeah, it feels a little bit small time for what the 49ers might do, but you could almost imagine Flamingo Land sponsored... Substitution in cooperation with Tesla. Tesla, or would it be Flamingo Land? Well, it was San Franciscan. Mm, indeed. Well, Flamingo lots Land. Of, lots of tech stuff. <laughs> well, they're miserable. Sheffield United presumably having a great time. Um, well, no, I mean, we are desperate to get up. It's I, worth remembering. I'm desperate. No, I'm desperate to win. I'm desperate to get promoted and enjoy it. I'm not desperate to go up. Yeah, it's worth remembering what it's actually like when you go up. Although they're playing Burnley in this game that I've listened to, so... And they are managed by... They have they went all with Paul Heckenbottom and swapped in for Chris Wilder. A couple of name, the name the, checks for both of them in this clip. There are options. There are there are things you can do mm. that are not those things. They could maybe, you know, they feel like they stay very on brand, is I think is what you're getting at, Moscow. So maybe Sean Bean is the natural next fit because he's played for him, hasn't he? In that film that he was in. What was that film called? When Saturday Comes. When Saturday Comes. That was Which Mel one. Sterland was in as well. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's a superb acting debut from Mel. Could Sean Bean do any worse? That's the question. But this is um, yes. Yeah, so this is just a collection of clips from them getting beaten quite badly by Burnley and the general angst in the crowd. Fucking hell! 
that was the end of the uh, of the video. Right, gonna have to uh, put the old sweary tags on. I feel with that. Yeah, quite yeah, cross, that's, quite that's cross. Quite good, good to hear Wilder. You know, after that brilliant time we had there, they've gone. It's what I think Moscow was getting at. There's like they've kind of gone full circle and just ended up right where they were, which yeah. is the championship with Chris Wilder in charge. Well, yeah, when when he's saying like, like he got sacked for this. Like you just replaced him with an older version of the same thing. Mm. And when Chris Wilder gets sacked, heck, he will be back. We know this. They're just going to keep swapping. I like the bit where he said um, the guy was so outraged <laughs> that they're getting battered on their own pitch. Just looking back through <laughs> that. It's happened quite a bit. Hasn't it? Eight <laughs> nil, yeah. five nil. Oh, so, is, the first five, uh, is this the first four they've conceded? Or was it five the other week? I can't remember. This either. is the first four nil they've actually done. But they have done one. a. It was four one. They got a goal. All right, first four. Uh, first time they've conceded. Uh, four at home and stopped. I think is essentially mm. the difference because it's six nil. Arsenal did them five nil. Brighton did them five nil. Villa did them. These are all at Bramall Lane. Uh, I mean, we laugh, but this was us twelve months ago, wasn't it? Not that, not that bad, but the, in, I mean, in terms of the general sentiment. Uh, yeah, and I also I sometimes look at their squad and see like because um, Cameron Archer, we were in for, weren't we? Gustavo Hamer, we were also. Mm-hmm. Quite fancied, so we uh, we just got to hope that um, Ilya Gruev is miles better than um, Gustavo Hamer will ever be. They're playing; uh, they're away to Scum tonight, aren't they? It's going to be a, got really, a good chance then. Which, yeah, no, it's like <laughs> everybody's saying that this could seal like the the their relegation and the, one of the worst ever seasons. Or alternatively, um, they could. Um, I don't know. Oh, what do you want? Because it would be hilarious. Oh, you want Sheffield United to win? Yeah, because they're going down. Mate, they're, they're yeah. ten points adrift with five games left to play. But you, you don't want Ten Hag to lose his job, do you? Well, he's going to do it in the summer anyway, isn't he? Mm, is he? Yeah, of course he is. Yeah. I don't know. I quite fancy them sneaking into Europe, and then these new owners going like, oh, "Well, he's had a tough time. All those players being mean about him on social media. Let's <laughs> let's let's put in a new uh, policy about Instagram." And give him a new contract. I think that's that'll sort it out. All the marginal gains they're going to be getting over summer are going to make all the difference to them. Mm. I think quite like sometimes when you read stuff about uh, scum, there's little bits thrown in that give you a, an indication where they're at. So Anthony did a um, a post on Instagram about him cupping his ears to the Coventry players and fans, saying that like, "Oh, you don't know like how much they provoked me." That's the only reason I did that because they provoked me first, and it was just thrown in on the. Uh, the art gallery about the the social media post which was not sanctioned by the club said and there's always there's lots of things like that where it's like uh, speaking on uh, instagram without the club being aware so and so said and it's i love it the whole thing's out of control isn't it yep and the thing with with that is if if this was you know 2000 and it's roy Keane cupping his ears at people scum fans would be like yeah rub it in the faces but as he's done it everyone's gone oh you fucking prick yeah. Stop being, stop just being yourself. Why don't you yeah. fuck off somewhere? How much does it pay for him? Eighty-five million pounds. It was a hundred million euro or thereabouts. Yeah. At the insistence of Ten Hag, and I think he should be, despite their, their uh, scouts valuing him at twenty-five million, should be their player of the season because I've I've never seen a player suit a club quite so well. <laughs> yes, indeed. Should we go to Cardiff then? No, I think I no? think actually, given we've done Huddersfield, we've done Sheffield United, and they're looping back of managers. I think we should go Warnock. Right. Okay. He was on Benjamin Bloom's YouTube channel. So okay. I think he's trying to flog some tickets. He's doing a tour, isn't he, Warnock? He was in the Sky Studio as well for I, I didn't see that, Leicester thankfully. Southampton yesterday. And the clips are doing the rounds, if you want to find them. Uh, it, he's just unbearable. <laughs> What's yeah. you hearing but being but, unbearable? Well, they're indul- they indulge him. Actually just everything. All the stuff we parody, he was mm. just doing it. Well, here he is on Benjamin Bloom's YouTube talking about Huddersfield and the relegation battle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm disappointed to see where Huddersfield are because when I left them in September, I felt I was, I, I, I said I'd do a season for them. And I thought if I took them till January, we'd almost be safe by then. And then a new manager could come in. And it, and it didn't work out. I was asked to leave in September. And, um, and the decisions that they made haven't really turned, haven't really been the correct ones. They've, they've really gone the other way. So I'm disappointed because I think the squad's a good squad, me. I, 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 I. I think the squad's a good squad, me. Should we hear um, what he was saying about the squad 
at the end of August. Oh, I remember this. We, we played it at the time, we? Didn't did, we? Yeah. yeah. I, I thought, I've, I thought oh, no, I've, I've clipped this up before. They lost 4-0 to you've Norwich. You've kept the bloody receipts, haven't you, They lost 4-0 to Norwich, and this is what he thought about the squad then. We are giving everything. The team's giving everything. I'm giving everything. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, when I look, pick the papers up, you know, it's all right saying we're disappointed. I was disappointed on Sunday when I picked the papers up and four of my main targets in the transfer window in the summer, one had made a goal for a, a winning team, uh, a smaller club than ours in the championship. Two had scored goals in the championship. And the midfield player was my number one target and got star in another game. You know, so when I see things like that, because we, we can't afford those players, it, it disappoints me as well. Are you with me? Because yeah. I felt, you know, we should have, we could have been in um, getting four or five good players to the squad. I didn't realise at the time that my budget would include uh, the players that we re-signed. Right. And, uh, you know, so, I, I, you know, I've been disappointed a lot in, in many things. But uh, I think, you know, I've got to keep my own counsel. <laughs> like you did. My budget. Yeah, so yeah. It, it was four or five players short in August, but now he now someone else has taken him down. He it, thinks they've, he left him with a good score. It's interesting the things. I mean, he's very careful to paint lines, clear lines about what he feels he has agency over and what he mm. doesn't, and what he's prepared to own and what he's not. So it was my budget, but he was let down by them because he didn't realise his budget was going to be smaller. He was only helping him out anyway. Yeah. You've got to remember that. He's only ever helping. He does refer to his his job when he was Huddersfield manager. He does refer to that as he was helping them out for a bit. Yeah. Which I guess maybe it's because he only does part-time hours. Yes. So you see, it's like, I'll stick my head in, do do a few hours down the Sioux Rider shop, that sort of thing. I'm helping him out, really. Yeah. It's it's generous of me. Um, should we go from one decade manager to another then? Uh, yeah, go on. Yeah, Jesse. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah Jesse, yeah. <laughs> um, he's talking about Italian football now because... He, Seems to think he's qualified for some reason. But uh, oh, hang on, Moscow's. No, carry on. I can see Moscow delving into something. Yeah. Um, just got an envelope off the shelf. If you're wondering, just what carry on. I'm, okay. just, I'm just doing. I'm doing theatre of the mind, Moscow, explaining what's just going on. But anyway, Roma have knocked AC Milan out of the the Europa League. Yeah. Uh, Urenta didn't start. I think he came on, and I believe Thomas, not Thomas Christensen, Rasmus Christensen. Yeah. He's currently injured, it, so didn't play. His lad. Yeah. But this is Jesse talking about um about the job De Rossi is doing at Roma. It also, for me, highlights that Rome is in a really good way. I don't think De Rossi's done anything that sophisticated in terms of the tactics and the football that they're really trying to play, other than they look organized defensively and they look confident on the ball. Sophisticated, organized, confident on the ball. Fuck me. All he's done is make him look organized and good on the ball. Yeah, imagine. How easy. Did you see the um, the clip that was doing the rounds from his game of De Rossi going absolutely mental with Llorente? Oh, no. <laughs> it, it doesn't work in an audio context. We'll have to go and uh, look it up. But um, the it seems like somebody translated what was actually being said. Llorente goes over to De Rossi in the technical area during a break in play, and he says something to him. And De Rossi's just like listening. He's like, he's like yeah, okay, what's, what's, what do you want? And then he just explodes, <laughs> starts shouting at him. And apparently um, it seems like Llorente had said, this player who's injured, he's like, oh, how long do you think we're going to leave him on? And... De Ross is like, the fuck do I know? You're going to have to ask him. I don't know how injured he's over there. I'm over here. What the fuck are you asking me? It's kind of the, the tenor of it. What I was reaching for off the shelf is, um, I keep meaning to bring this up at some point, Jim in uh, somewhere in Queensland, Australia, um, it arrived. He sent me uh, a note. said, Daniel, uh, everything Jesse knows about soccer is contained within. Now, it's a notebook. There it is. It's on the front is a picture of Jesse Marsh from his, uh, it says Jesse Marsh's soccer disaster class. You can see this on the YouTube version, by the way, if yeah. you want to look at that. that. He, um, he is sitting, it's from the photo from his master class where he's sitting behind the counters. And on, on the back, there is also another picture of uh, Marsh moving the counters on the pitch with a quote saying, we don't want to play wide is incorrect, but we know where the goal is and it's not in the corner. And yes, so it's everything Jesse knows about soccer is contained within. So those of you who can see a joke coming from a mile off will know that this is a blank notebook. Thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate that greatly and have been meaning to... Um, it didn't actually take very long to get uh, here from Australia. So if there's anybody else in Australia who wants to send us stationery... Mm. Post from the colonies, we could do a new feature, couldn't we? don't know how much... Um, Jim paid, because um, that's the other fact that we were quite interested when this turned up. There's not a price on there. 
the stamp. It's like, how much has this maniac paid, first of all, to make the notebook um, and then to post it to us? But the the gesture and the effort is very much appreciated. I like it very much, unfortunately. Um, you now have a notebook with Jesse Marsh's face on. Yeah. Quite twice. <laughs> but then again, if you, I mean, you can't see it on the cameras here, but when you put the, all the square ball covers on this table that we've got mm. here in the studio. My little craft project. Yeah, your little craft project. You, They are all specially printed off and then they're stuck down, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And like we've laminated them. But you specifically put Warnock's face where you knew Moscow sat. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a bastard. Every <laughs> single time I sit down, it's Warnock. And if I want a little bit of light relief, George Graham. <laughs> I do like that um, Jesse as well didn't refer to them as Roma. He said Roma in a good, Rome's in a good way. Yeah. The Coliseum. So it wasn't yeah. built in a day. No, no. But it, it's in good shape now. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. they've done all they've done is put in some nice architecture. Yeah. I think he's bitter because I think he fancied that job, but the the sticking with De Rossi for next mm-hmm. season as far as I know. But he was doing that thing of like, oh move to Italy and he kept dropping in of like, oh, he's had some offers from like some Europa League, conference league clubs and really interested in like a new challenge in getting back into European football. So um and then when that job came up when uh, Mourinho got sacked, I, I bet he was like Oh, yeah, just maybe I'll get my agent to have a word with him. And then, no, no. Because now they are um, organised defensively and confident on the ball. So it doesn't seem like there's any stress there for him to go and alleviate. Why would you want to take all that stuff away? Is the question. Uh, All the the Romans really did was build an empire. Yeah, yeah. It was quite straightforward stuff. How long did it take? Oh, well, the metrics were trending (laughs) in the right... (laughs) The underlying metrics. If he'd have been left... In charge for longer, he would yeah. have built an empire. Right. And, if, and he, likewise, if he'd have been in charge of Rome at the start and sacked, it, none of it would have worked. I don't know who started all the Roman Empire, the Roman lads. Block Caesar, probably. Was he, was he the first one, was one, he? He was one of the main ones. He's the, I know he's one of the main ones, yeah. yeah. And then there was the one who let it all burn. Yeah, Nero. Uh, Nero, he was, a, he, was a, he was a bad lad, wasn't he? Well, mm-hmm. or, you know. He did do that good CD burning software, though, didn't he, back in the day? If you Nero, Nero Burning ROM. That, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, I remember that's one, it well. One for the kids there, yeah. <laughs> burning your CDs. Because what's a CD, Grandad? And why would you set it on fire? Well, exactly. Anyway. Anyway, where do you want to... I mean, Southampton, I've I, not yet I feel got like, any... I feel like we, want to, we need to end on the Southampton one, and it's not like from last night. We can maybe bump that through to next week mm. or maybe save it till after the season so we can properly indulge You know, once we're up. Yeah, and, uh, maybe so. He said, oh, God. Do we um, need to deal with Leicester before they're actually promoted? Um, yeah, let's get it out of the way. All right, fine, yeah. They, they, they did have a new bloke on who I'd not seen on, on. It doesn't seem to do the live stuff, but they had him on. The other one up to? Has he been in, arrested or something? In a Southampton no. preview. No, he's, he's on, as you'll hear. All right. Um, but if, And he's just trying to talk about, you know, the general state of playing the division and how everyone's everyone's in a panic and everyone's thinking they'll lose games. Mm. Um, but the host bloke just can't leave it. And don't forget, you know, there's thousands of people just like us who are Leeds fans who uh, who are going through exactly the same as we're all going through, watching yeah. their team throw away points um, when they were looking like they were the it's team on a run. Though, isn't it? I've got to say, well, I know because you loved it because they were. Let's just say they, they were they're quite vociferous. Channel, they were coming in the live streams. Jack, they were literally. I had of every ten comments that were put on, you know, on YouTube after the show had gone live, seven of them were probably from Leeds fans. Four mm. of them had to be deleted because they were just abusive. And then it's funny they went and lost the game and they disappeared. <laughs> now it's we're, we're overly since they charged the away fans forty nine pounds for the uh, last game of the season, the, and oh. that's uh, that's that's too outrageous for some. Um, mm. so yeah, Leeds can. Uh, they, they can they, they they can stay where they're gonna, where they're going to be staying. They can stay they can stay down here. They can play Portsmouth next season. You know, somebody asked me the other day who if we go up who did I want to come up with us and I, I said it's a case of A B L U isn't it? Anybody <laughs> but <laughs> <delayed. laughs> God one. God damn edge lord. I always uh, picture him like he's holding up a queue in a post office. <laughs> they, they were all over my channel last well, week. Well, like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. While the police arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I will say? Um, is it Mary who's on Less the Slide Die TV she's been on? You you were on Radio Leeds with her, weren't you? Yeah. Do you know what? She's really nice. Yeah. Really sensible, measured, wow. that just a really nice person. Well, I think most of them on there seem, at least two thirds of the people on there seem all right. Mm. Just, yeah. Just it, Jim. Um, 
<laughs> Should we hear another clip? Is, um, is, is, well, speaking of which, is, is well, there a new thing happening here? Well, we've already had all the um, all the the jizz chat, but I feel like this is this is a step too far. And one thing to be um, thankful for for Moreska is that he hasn't gone down the route of um, resorting to uh, chest pumping and uh, fisting. Oh, <laughs> I did cut that short. <laughs> <laughs> we're back to your colonoscopy again, aren't we? Fisting the badge. Right. They were criticising Russell Martin for doing Again, that. we're back to your colonoscopy. <laughs> Apparently. Russell, oh. Apparently he does that. Are they glad that Maresco doesn't? They're glad he doesn't. Because if Maresco had tried it, they all probably would have screamed at him to fuck off. I mean, they don't Just like... Because they Although absolutely it, hated every minute of winning the league. I was going to say, in other points, they've definitely been saying he just is too passive on the sidelines and he, needs, he just stands there and he needs to be more expressive or something i don't know they've just not been happy have they but you know I'll, hopefully they'll go up and get a big points deduction next year and it'll be yes. quite funny the lead salute does get called chest wanking doesn't it by mm. certain fans of other groups which i thought was quite funny <laughs> <laughs> right um right let's do two more then can we check in on that cardiff city fan who's the young man whose channel we gave a nice little helping hand to earlier in the season they've been good to us this season actually of um, very good of cardiff always always liked them Last minute limbs against Ipswich and now Southampton. And what good has it done us? Well, it's given us a chance. It's left us in the race. It, it's dented Southampton's confidence. So they then lost 5 0 to Leicester, which mm. is not a good thing for us. But anyway, it was good to see. At one point, Southampton looked like they might catch us and then they lost at Cardiff and it was all, it yeah, was all fine again, wasn't it? So, I'll take it back. Thank you, Cardiff. <laughs> so this was um, I mean, part of the reason I think I like, I like this lad is because of uh, his optimism. Um, and his, his hope hasn't been absolutely diminished yet. Well, here he is making a pre-match prediction for the Southampton game. Score prediction for today. I'm going to go 4-0 to Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> so him and his dad have predicted a 4-0 and a 5-1 defeat, which is fair enough. You took This totally mirrors your opinion on all this stuff, doesn't it? Exactly. Um, but then here he is. He, he does miss the winner because he's he has a problem with his phone, which he's a bit sad about. But this is this is just him celebrating it. I like his swearing. He's good at it. It endears me to him. But then he's he's walking away from the ground and he does address the fact that he knows he's probably got he's like a square ball sub channel, isn't he? Right. Really but Is it time to get our people to speak to his people to I, I like him in Cardiff. I think he should stay there and he should stay supporting Cardiff. But um here he is just addressing I mean, what were we pr proposing to bring him up? His like adopt him. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, actually, no. Let's leave him where he is. <laughs> to, to tear him away from his I mean, family. Eth ethically speaking. I do think, like, I know you You like his, his swearing. I always, whenever I'm listening to him, I'm always, like, feeling on the verge of, like, calling child line. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody should be uh, doing something, but not to the point, uh, like, I don't think anybody would be saved by going to live with your two. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but here he is, anyway, talking about, talking to his Leeds fans. Well, I'm guessing the Leeds fans that are subscribed to my channel are very happy about this result again for Cardiff. Um, I'm still a, quite sorry that I'm still quite gutted that I missed the Ashford call. Don't be upset about it. It's fine. Not everything needs to be a piece of content. You can just enjoy some stuff. You were there. You, you were yeah. there and you enjoyed it. Yeah. Maybe this is a problem when he gets home. Is Parents are like, can't believe you missed that. Get to your room. <laughs> no dinner. How are we going to put it, food on the table now? We're never going to monetize this channel if you keep missing goals. <laughs> Someone who didn't go, miss go, the goal. Go and look at your poster of Mr. Beast and apologize to him. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who didn't miss the goal was Saints FC Vlog. Uh, again, this is someone who isn't recording the video, but you can just hear someone in the background um, in that way and in, enjoying the Cardiff winner. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, we laugh at it, but you can completely empathise, can't you? I hate yeah. this fucking club, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Sums up most weeks, doesn't it? I mean, at, the... least, at least at some point in every game you say that, but don't yeah. you? Whether it's you're missing a penalty, you're just gifting them a chance, there's always something. There's always some reason to say that. It brings out the best in us, doesn't it, all of this? Right, well, we'll wrap up uh, propaganda there. We've got a couple of more clips we've got for, uh, for the member show as well. Are we going to... Um... Check in on um, how Leo Yelda's doing in mm. Sunderland on the members show. Maybe, I presumably getting getting rave reviews, maybe. Yeah. Mixed bag? Mixed bag. Mixed bag. I'm glad it's not alone, put it that way. Right, so look out for that. We've got, so yeah, M- Michael Anus chat over on the members show. Yeah, a little bit perfect. of Yelda, Yelda chat. And, uh, it's full colon chat, actually. Don't, don't, <laughs> why stop at the anus? <laughs> That's what I always say. Just bring all the guys into, into it. And on that note... Uh, that is that bum note. for uh, for propaganda. We will return with propaganda next week where who knows where it will go. Who knows where it will go. We'll see you soon. The Square Ball Podcast.